And so I was charged with the uh, task of helping him create his own aesthetic. So every, so even with the shot, so this is a client uh, while in the middle of a haircut, uh, kind of showing like that, um, the graciousness of who he is, but then also showing um, the, um, I don't know why that popped up. Um, but just showing just the the luxury style of that. And so even from the style, the way the pictures are edited was very intentional to mirror um, the particular brand. And so the particular barbershop was called Gold Coast Barbershop. Um, this was another shot I did a few years ago. Um, this was uh, another person who had their own vintage boutique. And so we worked together with this concept of waiting on fall while the summer was giving me an approach. So a lot of times when you're in the fashion, since you always thinking about, okay, what's the next season? So we decided to like merge the two um, seasons together to come up with this type of look. And so it was like the idea of emerging fall with swim and attire and, and, and putting those two together. So this is one of the images that came from that. And the name of the company is One Fine Duo. Uh, also like doing portraits and hair shots um, in the corporal sense. So this is just one of those shots. Um, this was just more of the artistic kind of expression. Um, I also work with other artists is helping them doing their, um, having images that they can kind of paint off of. So doing like reference type photography. And so in this, like I was work with the artist hand in hand kind of with poses and stuff like that. So then in turn, they would have pictures that they would in return turn into like actual paintings. And so, and then while, while doing that, I also have the opportunity to take those same images and create my own type of artistic shots, you know, playing with the different colors and doing like moody type images as well. Um, this is another image from that same sense. And so like looking at the, showing these pictures and, and continuously pushing this narrative of people of color, uh, of, of getting the viewer to start thinking, okay, cool, what is, what is going on with this picture? What are, what are some things that we can start thinking about? What is he thinking about? What is this moment like? Um, why is that choice of color and stuff like that? Okay, one second, I'll see why this is supposed to be on Do Not Disturb. Sorry. All right, so this is another image. I used to I work with another mommy blogger. And so she does a lot of work with her son. So this is like one shot we did when we were at the park. And this is another shot with her and her son. And so this particular one, she was uh, promoting um, uh, breastfeeding and the uh, and, and fighting against the stigmas and fighting against the, the negative connotations that, they were, that mothers would get by publicly breastfeeding or just but breastfeeding their, their children in general. So. Um, she she went and got like the old, old school chair like a lot of our grandmas and moms would have and that was one of the shots from there. And this is just another shot of me just hanging out with one of my little cousins. Um and this is a shot from Fourth of July a few years ago. And this was a recent picture I did um that was actually a part of the exhibit I was a part of at the Museum of Science and Industry uh, called Black Creativity. Um, this particular image was called Blue Dream, and just still focusing on um, what is it like um, being a person of color, being a woman of color, um, being able to dream while the world around you could be uh, considerably dark or there'd be a lot of uh, things. And so this is a part of a series I'm working on called Breathing Underwater. So focusing on the premise of living in the world uh, where it can feel like you're living in a, put in situations where you have to do something opposite of what um, you were meant to do. And so quite naturally, we as human beings weren't created to breathe underwater, but sometimes living can feel like that. And this was taken from uh, the Women's March a few years ago. And cool. Anybody have any questions so far? Um, so I do want to get some participation in here. Um, 
so a lot of times when doing photography is you you are very much in charge of what the person sees and so what the person sees is, is a part of your vision and so since we're all in this particular space of talking about photography uh, i feel like it would be necessary to go into what is vision and what does vision mean to you all so if i could get a few people to shout that out that would be great um okay vision to me is kind of like i can just give an example mm -hmm. um kind of like 2020 for example it's kind of what you see like in a in an image or just like your imagination your dream that something that you want to come to life um yeah that's what vision is to me so good anybody else uh, I piggyback off what she said, and just with that vision is sometimes you just gotta know that it might not go with the vi go as planned. So you always gotta have a backup plan. So like she said, 2020, we all had our vision of how we thought it was gonna be. Now look at us, we stuck in the house. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you just gotta always have be prepared and not have different plans for your vision. It's dope. It's good. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everybody good? All right, cool. So it's, it's pretty much that. Like, vision is being able to have the ability to see past what you see or being able to pull something outside of your, your head into reality, being able to plan and think about the future and thinking about um, what's in front of you, thinking about uh, uh, something that you can't necessarily see or bringing things out of an imagination into reality. And so uh, you all pretty much hit it on the head. Um, so looking at this, this definition of photography, right? So since we're talking about photography, uh, I, I wanna make sure we understand what, it, what that is, right? And so of course, obviously we know that it's always taking pictures, so it's art or practice of taking and processing photographs. And so looking at that definition, can anybody talk about any thoughts that come to mind um, about what it means, of other, what is the practice of it, or what do, what do they mean by processing photos? For me, for me, processing means like um, adding it, editing your picture, your base picture in any way to make it kind of closer to your original vision because part of photography is knowing that you're not always or you're not ever really going to get exactly what you wanted but like being able to try and get as close to that as possible you know can be assisted by other means it's good and to me else? to me photography is like capturing the moment right you know, it's like the, when the picture's not moving anymore, right? Well, nowadays, you know, with iPhone, the picture can't move. But um, just like, it's something about like the stillness in the picture and you like wanting to convey a message. So capturing the message that you want to convey. So, so it's all that stuff. And then even processing could be uh, not only limited to editing, but also printing your pictures and how those pictures are presented as well. Uh, and that's another part that goes into that too. Um, practicing, just making, just trying different ways to push out your vision, trying different ways to articulate how you feel, or trying, trying different ways to um, present an image to a certain amount, group of people, all those different things. All right. Um, just to talk about a few few types of photography because there are different different types, um, and we'll go further more into that as we go further further along. Um, but you, for example, I got three here. So we have portrait photography, landscape, and food. Um, can, can I get one person for each of those to give tell me what they think those three mean, or what what do they see when they see those? Uh, portrait is mostly just like um a simple photo of someone's like part of their face or like just like their them themselves mostly people it could be like candid meaning like it's caught in the moment and it's not posed or it can be like 
just um, set up in like a studio or something. Good, it's great. Hit it right in the nail. Anybody else? What about landscape? Um, I think landscape is a picture of your surrounding, what you see around you. Yeah. Is it, uh, would it be considered limited to a particular place? Like a lot of times we, if we type Google in like landscape photography, we'll see a lot of like farms and stuff like that. Is it limited just to those type of spaces? No. Cool. What are some, what are some examples of some landscape, other landscapes that you think that we could capture or that people would capture that would be considered landscape photography? Mm, the city, forest. Yeah. Good. Well, food photography is, is, uh, is already kind of self-explanatory, but if anybody want to tackle that, what do they think, like, why, 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 why do people focus on, like, food photography? Or why would they? Uh, food has, like, in most places, food has, like, a culture. So, like, by capturing food, you can, like, tell different stories about your environment. And that, yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Good. So I have those three because I feel like since we all stuck in the house, those are the, those are some of the main three things that we can we can tap into. Where it's like you know if we're not at home by ourselves, we can take pictures of different people. Um, of course, we all in some type of environment, so there's some type of landscape. And while we in the house, most of us probably doing nothing but eating anyways. So you know that could be some some ways some things that we can dive into. Um, yeah. So let me go further along, see what else we got. All right, so uh, when, when I'm teaching photography and when I'm going into photography, I only really ask for three things, all right? You have a camera, whether it's a physical camera or in this case, an iPhone, cell phone with a camera, um, good attitude and a little imagination. A lot of times when I'm doing creative things and what I mean by good attitude, like some people get frustrated because some people may not consider themselves as being creative or they may look at something like, man, that don't make sense. And so a lot of times when being a creative, you just have to submit to the process or do not be frustrated from, the, and a lot of times we get frustrated because we have a lack of resources or lack of materials. And honestly, in my opinion, is when you have less, it's when you actually have more because then you're forced to use your imagination. You're forced to find a way to make this vision work with what you have. And of course, imagination, because sometimes what looks like something else, but when you tap into like your imagination and tap into this realm of the possibilities of, of imagination, then you could potentially make something to reality that somebody else wouldn't necessarily thought could be, or even yourself. All right, so you'll be surprised with what you can come up with just a cell phone and a few apps. All right, um, three apps that I tip, that I use over time is Lightroom, Visco, Snapseed, um, and Common Ground. I've been focusing mostly on Lightroom because I love the freedom that it has, and it doesn't allow you. You don't have you not you're not cornered to only just focus on filters. It challenges you to start off from scratch and make something uh, uniquely your own. All right, so. Um, just piggyback off the thing I just said, your cell phone, light on app, and open mind, so imagination, good attitude, all those things. All right. So going back to what I was saying before, like the reason of why I shoot, why I take pictures. So shooting for me, when I started thinking about photography and started thinking about that term, I uh, instantly started thinking about one of the things that I would constantly hear growing up on the south side of Chicago is when you hear shooting, you always connotate that with a gun. And so a lot of, and then also um, other, on the other spectrum, when photographers, we always talk about, now we going out shooting, we going like this, I'm like, cool, that's dope. And so now I get to use the same term to pick, to back, to fight against the things that I want to uh, eliminate and to fight against and, and bring positivity and light into communities and uh, just life in general. And I feel like that's, that's my way to give out back into the world. And so I remember one day I was um, walking around the house and I found these two shells. And I'm like, cool. I be in it and and when I saw them, it kind of just had me thinking. And, and in my mind, I'm trying to picture the environment of why these were used and why what what was the what is the story behind this and 
And, and so I just took, the, I took them and I brought them in my house and now they sit on my, my, my desk and I use those as a reminder, this is why I shoot. I'm, I'm shooting because I want to provide a way that people can have another outlet to express themselves, but also an outlet to change the narrative that we not all holding guns and shooting. We can take the narrative back and, and use our cameras to do the same thing. And cell phones with cameras is, is no different. All right, and, and just that. So I, I always want to challenge people to have a why or to come up with a why. Why, Even if your why is just as simple as I just want to be creative or I just want to try to see something different than what I see. It's, 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 it's a purpose behind what are you doing. Uh, anybody can just take a picture, but when you go in there with some type of intent, then that, that, that challenges you to, to really dive in, to really get into that purpose, to get into that process of photography, and, 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 and then making that art form uh, something that you can uniquely call your own. All right. I'm going to show you all a project that I did uh, that was solely an iPhone project. Um, a lot of people didn't know that was an iPhone project but I literally did everything in the house and so when I talk about photography and talking about using creativity and art as a way to process your emotions and a way to process using it as a way of an outlet that's what this was for me um just a little backstory this project was a project um when I lost my grandmother a few years ago and I used this pro this project I was doing it during my grieving process and one day I was just kind of going to the crib and I was just like man you see these flowers, and it all started off with that, and I just started pulling things that I had all within my house. Just come and see um, if you were feeling better and how things are going. Thank you. God bless. Goodbye. So, anybody got any thoughts, questions before I move on? Um, wait, you did all of that on your iPhone? All the pictures in there. Um, I end up doing the video on my computer, but there are there are apps that you can do the same video as well. But for the most part, all those pictures, like from editing, um, all was on cell phone. Yep. Okay. Any other thoughts? So, uh, I'm gonna give you all some more examples of cell phone shots. So hopefully you all can see these. And so, like I said, like now when I used to like walk around like downtown and all those different spots, because I'm not sure like where you all are um, location-wise, but just to give you like the a possibility and just to open you up to what's possible with cell phone photography and every every shot was edited and shot on the iPhone.
All right, so I want to open this up to see if anybody got any questions or any thoughts right now. I really like like all of those photos. They're really dope. But like, I want to know like, I saw like there was a constant theme with your editing, and I wanted to know like how you like created that or developed that. Cool. Yeah, and I'm actually gonna do a little demo too uh, at the end of this. So I'm gonna um, go through these slides real quick, and then I'm gonna show you all demo. But yeah, um, so I use different things, um, like whether it's, whether it was Visco or Lightroom. Um, so a lot of times when I first started like shooting and started taking pictures, I was really obsessed with like this like moody type film type look. And so what happens? Guys, I think we lost. Did we lose Josh? Looks yeah. like we didn't. Uh, I think we lost Josh. Give him a second to come back in. It happened before. So, how are you guys liking it so far while we're waiting on it? It's good. It's good. I just, I really, yeah. I'm going to ask him, like, I really want to learn um, how to take photography for clothes because I. Sometimes I pay people to do my photography, but it can get really expensive. So like, I kind of want to learn myself. Yep, yep, save your money, learn all the trades. Good idea. Anybody else? How y'all feeling about this so far? Mm. Josh is back. Joshy poo. I'm sorry. I don't. I have my phone. <laughs> Um, on do not disturb, but it's still stuff coming through. Is everybody else still here? I didn't see anything while we were. Did y'all see anything? Yeah, I had a call oh. that came through, and I don't know why it still came through. Okay. But it's on. But I'm sorry. Let me go back to the uh, to the slide. But yeah, like I was saying that um, I started off doing a lot of like moody stuff and I like that film look. So I would add like a lot of what you call like fades and all that, and, like fade and a lot of contrast of my photos to make them a little bit more dark and kind of moody. And like I said, I'll, I'll show you all some of that. Cause I gotta be off at one, right? Yeah. Sorry, since you started a little late, there is a, a cushion, so you have a little bit more time. So I wouldn't say go past one thirty, though. As the latest, not. That works. Thank you. Okay. Share the screen again. All right. Can I see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um. So I don't have a camera on me. Well, I do have one, but you all don't have one on me. But just to give you just a brief, these are like the three main settings on the camera that you look at. Your shutter speed, ISO, and f-stop. Shutter speed deals with the speed of the shutter, depending on the speed of, also the speed of light, but also the speed of catching the speed of the subject. And then you have this thing called ISO, which is like the light sensitivity into the lens. And I can show you all how, to, how, how you can play with the ISO on the iPhone. Um, that's real simple. And then that's about dealing with, that also deals with how much light information comes to the lens. And so that also in return show what's in focus and what's not. And a lot of times when you have that number being the smallest number, that means that's the most light. But it also means that whatever in the forefront, that's what's going to focus on, and that's what's going to blur itself out. And so I can show you that a little briefly um, when we go into the app. And one of the cool things about Lightroom is that that app allows you to be able to tap into those settings in your camera that you wouldn't necessarily be able to tap into otherwise. And so we'll probably go into that another day just to give you all how to play with all that. All right. Um, so when when taking a when taking photos, there are so I'm not I'm not huge on technical stuff, but I think it's cool just to kind of get an idea of what you want when you're taking pictures. So you can be like, cool. It just kind of because when you're taking pictures, you want to be able to start challenging yourself 
to have different perspectives and different angles and doing different things. I think somebody forgot to mute their phone. Um, and so we're gonna go over some of these and any, I got some examples. So we're just gonna go through them real quick so we can spend more time going into the demo and then I, I can kind of like converse back and forth doing those. All right. Um, so you have rule of thirds. Basically, this competition. Uh, for some of you all who already started off with me, we already went through some of these. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. I just want to kind of get your mind thinking about different stuff while we, while you going out taking pictures um, this week, this weekend, uh, while we are at home. All right. Uh, so this composition technique um, that breaks down your frame into nine even squares and it concentrates on keeping your subject outside of the center square to keep your viewer's eye moving around the composition. So basically what that means is that you are intentionally taking a picture that will make the viewer shift their eye to a certain side of the frame. Um, typically it's mostly left or right, okay? And so you have, you have this example, this would be a cool example of rule of thirds. And typically you see a lot of rule of thirds when at advertisements, all right? And so when, and, and when you have an advertisement, most times you might have a subject over on the one side and then over and maybe in this section so where they may have like some type of text or maybe like a logo somewhere over here. And so basically what happens is you shift, you, so as soon as you look at the image, your eyes should immediately go over to the right because I intentionally framed it that way. And so let's say if I was using it for like an advertisement, then I could put the text over here. And so this is what you would call a negative space. A negative space in a picture or even a painting is a space and a, uh, in a piece in of uh, whatever you're working with where there's nothing there so they would call it negative space and the negative space is either either it can be left as is or you can fill it in with something else like type a logo typically that's pretty much what they normally leave there or even some type of graphic or something like that all right symmetry um we've all taken math we've all taken geometry um, symmetry is one of the cool things about photography because when you are taking pictures, you have your frame, right? Uh, and so you have this square. So just think about a square and you're dividing it literally down the middle. And so when we're taking pictures, we're doing that same exact thing. We're taking something and literally imagine there's a square and imagine our subject in the middle and splitting it down so you have equal parts on each side. And so I have an example I'll show you, but let's go to the definition real quick. Uh, refers to a line that splits uh, an object in half and both sides of the object in the mirror uh, are both sides of the object are an exact mirror of each image of each other and then this this object is said to be symmetrical right so even on both sides and then the line sm splits symmetrical is called the line of symmetry all right so this is an image you all probably saw on my other website. So this would be a symmetrical image, right? Although the tree is not on both sides, what, what, what we're focusing on is the rim. And so if you have your imaginary line, right? So if you have your imaginary line, your imaginary line will go here. And so then you will see on the left and the right, you should be able to see an even amount of space on both sides. And sometimes it may be a little shifted over, but for the most part, your subject is fo focused on um, one image being split down the middle, and you kind of imagine that line. One of the cool things about a lot of cameras that we have, they have a grid, so then you can kind of see where in that image, where it would fit down the middle. So you might have, yeah, so it would just fit down the middle. There's my, if, and if, at any point, if anybody has any questions, just shout out or let Bianca know, and then I'll stop. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to learn how to take photography from my clothes because, yeah. So, like, does that apply to clothing? It can. It can. Um, so, what I would say as far as, like, so it's, there's a lot of cool things you can do with, with clothing. And uh, maybe we can touch on that. I might be able to touch on that today a little bit. And so a lot of things, of like, since you don't, you don't have, like, you can either, like, you know, take a picture of somebody and you can have them literally splittered, sent down, centered down the middle. So let, whether you're doing like a lifestyle shot, you can say like, okay, cool, man, I want you to line yourself up directly in the middle of the street Then I'm gonna take you. And then the cool thing about it is that if you, if you do it in a space where there's not a whole lot of busyness in the background, like almost kind of like this rim here, there's not a whole lot in the background. So you can really look at it and really focus on the details of the rim. And so when you're doing, 
um, product shots. The, the main the main focus is making sure the person can see what 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 the product is that you're selling, and so that that should always be your main focal point. And so it, it the yes, the environment is dope, and the environment is a, it can be important. It can help shape the narrative, what you're trying to say and what you're trying to do. But at the end of the day, making sure that whatever you're trying to do brings focus to whatever you're trying to sell, because you're not trying to sell a good picture. You're trying to sell a good product. And the good picture just helps you have the ability to do that. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. And then also rule rule of thirds would be pretty good with that as well. So like, for example, let's say she had on one of your shirts, right? So and then, and then she's and, then, and remember I said rule of thirds is that you are intentionally forcing somebody's eye to go to a particular space. And so if the, if, if in this shot and if most of you see it is just, is a shirt. Then when I soon I look at the picture, I'm like, boom, it's going straight to the shirt. I'm like, cool, what's that? And then and over on the other side, you may have the logo kind of on the other side. Or maybe you may have the website kind of at the bottom or something. Or even the picture might just stand alone by itself. So there, there, are, some, there are some ways that you can implement these with product photography as well, absolutely. All right, so frame. So remember I said, when you take a picture and when you look into, when you look into the camera, you're going to see a box. That's your frame. But one of the cool things about taking pictures is that you can use your subject to be a frame for you. And that's basically what this talks about. And so it's the composition technique using objects in your photo to frame your subject for you, right? So creating a lot of cool um, depth and interest, but it, it creates a lot of like dynamics and it can create more telling the story. And so thinking about when we're doing photography, we're trying to, let me see, we got vision, we got imagination, and we are, in control of what the viewer sees, right? And so it's, this this technique can help can help you do that a lot. And so in this, like I said, some of you all have probably seen this before, but I want somebody to kind of tell me what do they what do they see? What it what is how is this utilizing the frame within a frame? What are some elements that's help doing that? They're using the leaves to frame like in the middle of the house and they're using the leaves around it. As a frame. Yeah, good. And you could do that with a lot of different things, right? So let's say, for example, if we are um, walking past and we see a gate or something, we can use the bars of the gate to be the inside of a frame. And what if we see some, let's say if we see a house on the inside of that, or even if you see a dog on the inside of that, you can use that to frame a frame inside of a frame to create more depth and more interesting things within the frame to more shape how the person sees and then kind of get them to kind of think okay, what are they trying to do why you know what is this bar doing but then it also can bring perspective into the subject right so looking at this we could tell okay cool this house is obviously in the middle of the woods somewhere i don't know or you can kind of create this story to writ literary writer hood or something cottage or something i don't know but that doing these different things can help you do stuff like that all right Lines. Lines is really dope, really cool. Um, the name kind of says it pre pretty much what it is. So basically you're taking the picture and when you when you look, take the picture, uh, you're intentionally pointing out lines and different, it can go in different ways. But when you look at the picture, you can obviously see lines that are kind of guide you to go different ways and stuff like that. And so this, this concentrates on lines to make your photograph. So lines is the very basis of the photo. So you have vertical lines, I mean like power and strength, the horizontal. So like the lines can go different ways, right? You have diagonal lines, leading lines, which can make that literally take your eye and shift you going a certain direction. Okay. And like I said, these are things that we can kind of piggyback. So maybe like one day we can dive in and just strictly just just talk about lines, or strictly talk about. Uh, rule of thirds, all these different things. This is some things that just kind of get your mind thinking about different things, all right? So if you don't get it all today, don't worry. This is just an introduction or something. All right, so lines, right? So when you're looking at these, right, with the train tracks, the, li the lines are leading us forward with like this subway kind of tunnel. The lines are leading us forward, but then we look at, we can, if you look at it, we can see we got some some lines that's kind of going kind of like on a round is so there's different dynamics of the photo that can can have you going different ways and then you can literally turn the photo a different way and you can see a different perspective of the photo altogether where like if you step back a little bit all you see is shapes and not like 
those are the cool things that you can do with lines and a lot of a lot of and then I put the downtown because that's a popular thing when we walk in downtown we looking up oh snap the building itself creates lines that can shift our eye to move forward all right like I said if anybody have any questions just feel free to just jump out there all right you have another another technique it's called repetition um, this composition technique using the repeti repetition of object, colors, textures, or lines to create interest uh, and to create attention to your viewer. Breaking repetition also way draw interest to your viewer. Odd number groupings of best three or four, four or five. So basically in this image, you're taking something and you're repeating it or you're finding something that has a similar shape that repeats itself either going at a different angle or going front and back it, it does a few different things, okay? So I'm just gonna show you this example, right? So here we have this gate, right? And so they're using um, the, the, the top parts of the gate and the, the, the bars themselves. But if you look at the top, like they're the, they're the same shape, the same thing, but just being repeated more than once to create like a dynamic where you can see something interesting that's happening here. Or even with like these trees in the forest, I stay the same, the same, the same uh, type of tree in the same space, but then you just see multiple the things being repeated. So now it creates this different dynamic. And so you could do this with pretty much anything. Like you could even do it with the same. With a, if you if you laid out a set of toys and sit them up, sit them on the floor and line them up, it's the same thing being repeated. Or a series of shapes, or even if you did like a series of basketballs and line them up behind each other. And sometimes they don't necessarily have to be the same shape, but uh, the same size but the same shape can also allow you to be able to create that same thing okay so um this, this is probably my last one so portraits and so um like i said if you right now it's, it's kind of messed up because we, we're not able to like talk to one another see people but if there's people in your house i think that would be a really cool opportunity to kind of explore portraits and there's another thing self-portraits is one thing too like you can literally take pictures of yourself i mean i'm sure a lot of you do it anyways but you what you can do is you can take your camera and kind of sit it against something put it on a timer and then you can find find ways creative ways to take your own portraits right and so we already talked about portraits earlier but just to kind of give a more in-depth what that is right so a portrait is a painting photography photograph sculpture or other artistic representation of a person in which the face and its expression is dominant the intent is to display the likeness personality and even the mood of the person or people because it does it's not limited to just one person in a particular photo all right um portraits are one of my favorite things to do because it allows you to be able to um, portray a certain person's likeness or even another way to get to know a person. Uh, so then with the with the person with the viewer doesn't see the conversation you are allowed you are you are having with the person behind the scene to be able to portray a certain part about this person to when the person when the, when somebody sees the final picture, they can look and say, Man, I don't know what it is about this person, but something interesting about this person, or I like something about this person, or man, this this photo is just really striking because of the way the angle and the way like and it's just a really cool way to interact with people in a way to um, just have fun with photography. Everybody good so far? Okay. All right, so I'm just throwing like a few examples. So like, this is one I shot of a little kid. Um, and so like, I really, I really love this image. And also too, with, with portraits, they're not only limited to color, right? You have like black and white photography, um you can of course you have full color and then sometimes you have like hair shots that call that goes into that way like you only focusing on the person's face and and the rest of the body is kind of not existent in the frame or like where the way this picture is and when i'm going to talk about f-stop and so now i have this number have it as, as wide as i can get it and so now he's in the forefront so now he's the focus of what i'm doing and so when i take the photo everything blurs out so not only i can focus on him and so now you can now you can now you can kind of look into the photo, kind of see all right, what what's up with this kid, and and then then you get this interesting thing of shadows, depending on where the light is coming. And another thing I want to point out with photography is light is everything. Um, 
that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have like a whole bunch of set up a light, but without without no type of light, then you're not able to, then there's nothing for the photo to kind of work off of. So I, I would challenge you when you take the pictures to be creative with the light that comes in from the house. Like natural light uh, to me is my favorite. And this this was shot up like natural light because he's sitting in front of, sitting by a window. So the light that's sitting on his right side is coming from the window that's in front of him. And then the shadows because the shots, the because the light is hitting that and so the light is obviously can't wrap around his face so then you get to drop a shadow that comes off on his left side and that also creates for an interesting photo and so um yeah i would challenge you all to play with natural light and and play with different time different times of the day produces different light as well in the morning you get what's called magic hour so that's that's around sunrise and as the day as the day progresses you will notice that the the light outside gets brighter because the sun is going higher and higher. By noon, the sun is at its highest point. And then it's the reversal effect towards the later day. So as it gets later, the sun gets lower, lower, lower. Then you get back to this other magic hour time, which is sunset. So sunrise and sunset is like your magic hour. They call it the magic hour because there's something um, beautiful that happens when the sun comes up. And when it hits like the cloud and the lights, you get all these different like pastel like colors. And then, but it's not because it's not super bright, you can get a really amazing photo. So I would challenge you to try to try to text pictures around those times and, and I promise you you'll get some nice shots. Um same thing for video. If you do video, th those are some really great times. Um cloudy days are great too, because what that does is the sun creates a natural diffusion that you would that you can that you would get when you are in that's why when you in studio you see like they have like these lights and they have these like white sheet things over them that's to help diffuse the light so it's not super harsh uh, what happens is when you are shooting on a cloudy day the clouds come up as a natural diffusion and you get like these those are some really great shots a lot of shots that you were seeing um that were let me see if i have an example of that. i mean that would be considered like a cloudy shot and so the sun is not super bright and it diffuses the light good enough so I can get like this nice, cool type of texture. And you can you can make it warm too in the, in the editing process if that's what you like. Uh, one of my purposes, I like to shoot mostly cool type shots, right? So it's the same mom uh, from earlier. You know, this was just a shot of just her and her son just kind of kicking and them just enjoying themselves. And so just kind of capturing the moment of a proud mom and an even more proud son who just really loves his mom. All right, you know, the client of mine, we was like on a rooftop. This was like on a cloudy day, kind of like got the snow kind of coming. So portraits can really speak and get you to kind of think about who that person is. So I want to try something real quick before we move on to our um, demo. Looking at this picture, what do you guys think that he does for a living? If I can get like two I people. Know. I know who that say? is. Oh, well, if you know who it is, then you can't say nothing. Well, he's he definitely a businessman, whatever, because he looked really professional. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, though. Anybody else? I need one more person. Yeah, I would, I agree. Like business, I guess. Cool. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe so, a teacher. Uh, I don't know. Teacher, dope, dope. Cool. So I like to do that when I show show those pictures. And uh, sometimes I ask those like immediately while I'm showing the pictures, because one of the things I want you to point I want you to point out that you are all um, did was that none of you all said nothing negative about the person, right? And so the power of photos and the power of portrait photography is just that you have the power and to portray somebody in a particular likeness. Uh, and then and then, it, and then it gets the person thinking like, cool, what does this person actually does? And so you are right, he is a business person, among other things, serial entrepreneur, motivational speaker, all those great things. But one of the cool things I love about photography is that I can help make somebody look um, important or feel like there's some type of value to their lives, their lives. And that, that's the beautiful thing. Like he, he could very much so not have been any of those things, but with the right 
outfit and the right shot, the possibility of limitless of who he is and who he could be. And so that's one thing when, we, when we're doing portrait photography is, is thinking about like, who cool, I have the responsibility of making sure that this person comes out the best way possible. All right, cool. So anybody got any questions so far before we move on to the next thing? No. Okay, great. So let's go back. So this is the Lightroom app. All right. So it's this LR app. Um, like I said, there are there are other apps, and so I, I want to show you all those stuff at a later time, just to kind of give you be more real, well rounded. But this is more, this is easily like my favorite one because it syncs with the actual desktop um, software on my computer and so there's there's a mobile and that and they sync back and forth so this is really cool but i really like it because it's hands-on so when you go into the app this is typically what you see um typically like if you're taking pictures you'll see like your whole camera roll here so this it has it serves with two two functions all right and so this is what we'll be editing in so i already kind of created a folder that's based off of this class all right so i picked about like 10 pictures or so. Uh, some are like in different areas and some are actually from like a walk I took a couple of times, like one from earlier this week and one from like a little while ago. Um, so I want to get into those first, but before we get into those, I just want to point out a few things that are that exist in your regular camera. Okay. So when you have, excuse my, my screen. So when you have your, your camera, right? So we are, well, Everybody doesn't have an iPhone, but for those who do have an iPhone, I just want to point out a few different things. And so remember I said that you can control your ISO exposure, whichever term you want to use, they're both the same thing, the light and darkness of your camera. So if many of y'all didn't know that, when you press, when you tap on the screen, you'll get this, this light thing that pops up. And so if you hold down on it, you'll see a little bar. And so if, as you go higher, you'll see that it starts to begin to get lighter. And as you move it down, it starts to get darker. And so you can use that to your advantage when you're taking pictures, especially when it's going to be outside and maybe too bright. Or if you're taking pictures of a sunset or something like that, and you want to kind of play with those shadows before you start editing them, you can do that there. All right. There's another thing that I, I want to point out. I know everybody uses the portrait mode. All right. Let me see what I can do. All right. So I had already been working on stuff earlier. So everybody uses the portrait mode, right? And so when you look at when you when you look at the portrait mode, as you can see, like it'll start blurring out what's in the background. So what is it? What do what are you seeing is the f style, but it's automatically doing that for you. But what a lot of people don't know, and what I what I see is a lot of people take pictures and they blur it out, and they have it so open that when they it'd be it it'd be almost kind of like way too too blurry to the point it looks fake right and so when when you do that right at the top you'll see there's a f in the right top right hand corner so this allows you to mainly focus and change your aperture but on the phone it's called an f stop okay so the smaller number means it's, that's how big, how wide it is. That means it's, there's all this light that's coming in there. And the bigger the number comes in, it's, it's less light, but there's more information that you can take in. So I don't know if you all are seeing And if you are seeing it, let me know or you, if you can see the difference in what's happening here. So there you see that's super, super blurred up. But as I begin to change that number, it's becoming being less blurred and I can see more of my subject. Although it's still blurred in the background, it's just not that, not that crazy where it looks not realistic. All right, so that's a little tip that you can play with um, when taking pictures in your actual iPhone camera. All right, so going back to Lightroom. So Lightroom also, so let's go back. All right, so when you open up your app, you see this, right? And of course, like anything else, you can create your own albums and all that different stuff. It, it does really great at like organizing your stuff so you can know where your stuff is. So if I go into this, my folder, right? So when you go into your, your, your app and then you start looking to like your, your camera uh, log or whatever, 
you see at the bottom that it also has the ability to take pictures and have its own camera setting as well, right? Um, and so, so let's think. Let's let's just pretend that we had our own. We taking our own pictures, right? So this is like a makeshift studio set. So I got some stuff here sitting here. So I got a old school Jordan jersey, which I don't know nothing about. You know, some old J's or whatever, whatever, right? So this, 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 this to kind of like create like this story thing, right? Kind of nostalgic. Got an old school film camera, ninety snapback, whatever. So when you're looking at the bottom here. And so I want to, so you, if you, that, that white button in the middle is how you take the picture. Next to that, it gives you three different options, right? You can do automatic, which means that it does all the settings for you. Then you can also do professional. Professional is almost kind of like your own mini camera in your own hands, okay? So you have these one, two, three, four, six settings, okay? One is exposure, almost kind of similar to the other setting. Instead of tapping the screen, you can tap the screen to do it, but instead of tapping the screen, you can tap exposure and you can literally physically change it. And the cool thing about, I love about these apps is that if you look at it, it'll tell you what you're changing. So now you're learning as you are manip or you're move, moving through these different settings, okay? So this one says sec, sec, so that means like the seconds, but this is all, this, this, this what I would kind of describe as almost being like inserted speed. All right, and so it, it tells you right there, that's your shutter speed, all right? And so not to go too far into that, just thinking about, okay, the, the higher the number is how fast. And so when you have a shutter on the camera, you'll hear like this click, click sound. You only take a picture, it's like, right? And so how fast that is depends on how big that number is. And so it's basically telling you like, if, if your shutter speed is that fast, and, and a lot of, most, basically if you have a, a subject that's moving around a lot, you want a bigger, uh, shutter speed. If it's not, if they're not moving a whole lot, you'll have it smaller. Um, one of the things, if you're noticing this though, and it's cool that you can see this, is that when 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 you are changing the the I'm sorry, when you're changing the the shutter speed, if you notice that it's changing the light, right? So speed and light are almost kind of like synonymous too. And so if you have a shutter speed that's super low you will know that, okay, cool, it's, it's, it's not moving that fast, but however, if, if it's that low, then that means that you're gonna end up with a brighter image. So then you will, all, you will have to start manipulating other things. So like shutter speed, ISO and F-stop, it's almost kind of like a, like almost works almost kind of like a math equation, right? One thing offsets the other and other offsets the other until you get this perfect mix of what you're trying to do. But that's kind of like on the high end fast thing, whatever. But for the time being, you can literally just do automatic, take a picture. I will challenge you to just go in and just try different aspects, different perspectives, angles, or everything, but it also just most different things. So we got a few pictures we can play with. And I took some earlier, so I can just show you, all right? So this is already an edited picture, right? Strictly small, strictly edited on iPhone, strictly edited in this app, all right? So I'm just gonna go through a couple of them, and I'm just gonna kind of like edit them kind of together, kind of, and then we'll just be wrapping up, all right? So before I go any further, do anybody have any questions? Does anything not make sense? Anybody confused about anything? Okay. All right. So, so when you open this app and when you click on an image, right, and it, it brings down your toolbar at the bottom, there are a lot of settings in here, especially if you um, have the full version. So, so for some of you all, it may look different at the bottom because if you don't have a page subscription, it doesn't give you access to all the settings. But that's not necessarily an issue because we really only need to care about four of them. So the, the four are light, color, effects, and detail. Those are the main ones that I use and those are the main ones that I particularly stay in, right? So 
And one of the cool things I like about this, if you hold down the image, it'll show you how it looks beforehand, right? And so I kind of already took it kind of dark. And so I just wanted to kind of bring that out even more. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to reset the whole thing. All right. Just to kind of give you a perspective of how it will look like if I was to edit this picture. And so typically I just have fun to kind of play with because I'm in my mind, I, I knew that I wanted something kind of film type of look kind of dark and moody. And so what I'll kind of do is I'll go into, I'll start off with my light and start playing with exposure that's light and dark. I'll start playing with contrast with what brings out a little bit more of the darkness into the actual image. And then I'll start playing with highlights. Highlights is basically kind of like just thinking about the bright, the brighter side of the image, the bright, the colors that kind of sit on the top. And you have shadow of the image that's kind of like sit on the bottom. So like when you are, let's say you, you are looking at, let's say you're standing in front of a light, right? And the light that the light that hits hits you on the top of your skin, that'd be the highlights. And the shadow that kind of cast off from the light is the shadow. All right. So and then you got your whites. So whites just mean any any type of whiteness that's in the image, it will enhance it or decrease it, depending on what you choose to do. And then you have your blacks. So your blacks mean that any any the darkness or the blacks in the image, you can like I said, you can open it up to brighten it up to reveal more of that of the black size of the image, or you can kind of bring it out and get rid of it altogether. Okay. So what I like, what I want, like I said, I wanted more of a film type of look, right? So I may bring this down to be a little bit more dark because my I really love like silhouettes and stuff, right? So just to give you a perspective, that's how it looked before. That's where we're at now. And so, and it don't really take a whole lot. Like I said, that's where it comes with, that's where the imagination comes in. So like you have an idea in your head. The, the thing is like when you're editing is that like you are trying to mimic what's in your head to the actual image, right? So... I don't really, yeah, I want to bring that up. I want to see more of the colors and all that stuff. I think I'm cool with that. There's another setter in here. It's called the curve. So when you see, a, so one of the things I love about Lightroom is that like when I first started off doing these images and doing stuff like that, I, a lot of, I love a lot of filters that has a little film thing. I'm like, man, it would be great if I could figure out how to do it myself. So I figured out that it's the curve that does that. So to start off, I'll probably, probably like take a, put a dot in the middle. And cause basically what you do is you'll bring this up and you'll start seeing like the film, you'll get like this faded look. So it's kind of like that film. If you do it the opposite direction, you'll just get more of a darker type of image. But I was going more for like a film type of look. And so you just kind of play with it. And so these are also a range of highlights, mid-tones and can't remember what the top one was, but it, it helps you get like that film type of look or to make it more of a contrasty, more of a, a bolder type of thing, depending on the type of image that you have. They don't always work for everything. All right. And so we, we did best with messed around with light. So let's go over to um, the color. Okay. Temperature just means cool or warm. Cool. And, and it's cool, it, everything is kind of color coded so it can give you an idea of what you're doing, right? And so when you mess with the temperature, you can either make something more of a cooler tone where that, that gives you a lot of like blues, right? And then your warmer, your yellow, your oranges, you can make a more of a warm image. So I'm more of a cool type of person, so I'm, I'm gonna do it that way. And so your tints, and so that means you can you either decide to add, either leave it as is, or either add more of a greenish type of feel, a more of a purple type of feel. And as you can, as you're looking now, you can see that like the image itself already looks three times better or different than it already looked before. All right. So that's just a I'm gonna leave that one there. Then just to give you a deep uh, idea of the other one. So texture. So this one affects a lot of these are mostly just playing with the texture and playing with the more of the details of the actual image. You can either bring in more or bring out less. And like what's called a vignette, which deals with like, you know, you can make it kind of clear on the outside or just almost kind of like a frame within a frame or just make the, the size and the, the top and bottom more of a darker type of feel. Um, and so like there are tons of things to play with. Like we don't have a whole lot of time to go into them, but I just want to kind of give you like an introduction to show you what's possible with these apps and show you what's possible on the cell phone. All right. So we kind of touch those and then so just to give you an idea of what clarity does, you might not be able to see it, but basically what it does is it brings in more detail into the image. 
All right. And let's see. Anybody got any questions before I go further? Okay. I'm going to do like two more because I don't want to go over our time. Let's go. We did a landscape one. Here, I'm going to show this little quick snippet real quick. So basically, no, so basically what I, I know, a lot, like so some of y'all took class with me before, and I, you know I, I love construction paper. Because I like construction paper because there's a lot of variety and a lot of things that you can do with it. And so what I want to kind of do is just show like this quick little video. Like I was messing around with stuff earlier. And just to show you like how you can use simple things in your house and to create cool things, but also like create some cool narratives or just even sh like take pictures of stuff that you really enjoy. All right. So in this video, right, as you can see, I got a piece of construction paper, a little tape, whatever. It's been used or whatever. So now I'm taking the shoes and kind of like laying them out, playing around with how I want them to kind of look, the orientation of them, all that stuff, right? As you can see, like the shoes are pretty worn, right? I've had them for a while. But that's kind of how I like them, right? So I'm just playing around, seeing how I want them to look into my shot. All right. And so in the in the video, you'll see that I'm actually going to like take pictures while I'm doing it, just to give you an idea. Like I'm actually taking the pictures. You know, and as you see, like I'm going in closer, right? I'm getting more perspective of the image, and then you see less of the background, more of the the. The construction paper, so now the construction paper acts like a backdrop. Okay. Cool. So now, so this is, right? So that's one of the images, okay? And so I went in and I edited those images, edited it, right? And so that went from this to that. And so this is the original of that particular image. And so someone asked me earlier, how do you how do you get like those type of like moody type of like images, right? So what I want to do is I'm gonna edit this one. All right. So it's those and in that you can you literally do all that in those four four ones, right? So light, color, effects, and detail. So I want to play with. So I want I like my stuff more kind of dark in, so I'm gonna bring down the exposure a little bit, and I may want to increase the contrast. I want to bring out those blacks. I may want less of a highlight because I just really want to bring make this really a dark image. I may want more of a shadow. Let's see, do I want the lights? I'm gonna take the whites out as well. And then I'm gonna increase my black zone. So right now you can already kind of see I've already I've made the image like dramatically more darker. All right. So I'm gonna move on to my next one. So like I said, I like I like my stuff more in the cooler end. So now you now you can now you're seeing like a whole different change within the image altogether, right? Before, after. I feel a little green, so I may throw it in there just a little bit. All right. So vibrant, vibrance basically deals with the color, right? You can make things like super, like robust, and bring out the colors, or you can pull it out. I want to kind of pull it out a little bit, all right? So saturation and vibrance kind of go hand in hand a little bit. Um, the thing is with saturation is that you are literally like pushing the colors a little bit, but like the more you, you pull out, then you start, then you get like a more black and white image. And so for people who um necessarily let's say if you want to make black and white images from scratch you can do that um while we're talking about that there's a setting where you can if you literally want to play with a black and white image at the top right here when it says left because we're in the color color panel if you click black and white it'll switch it black and white to you automatically um but i prefer to do it from scratch and so how i normally do it was like i'll take my saturation pull that down and then start playing with other things to get a different type of tone of a black that I'm looking for. All right. So right now that's kind of what we're working with. So that's what I wanted to kind of play with right there. Then I'm gonna go on to the effects tab. And I may want to 
add a little bit more texture to the image, all right? To bring more detail to shoot out. I'm gonna bring a little more clarity, just more of a harder detail, more of a 3D type of look, more depth to it, right? And it, and, it, and make it a little bit more grainy. And so dehaze, so that kind of, if you look at it, still playing with the light and darkness of it, but it just gives you like a more of a gritty type of like, it, it works pretty good with like black stuff. And you, you can see it with a lot of different images, but for right now, I want to kind of make these more of a darker black, all right? So that's before, that's after, all right? Um, I'm definitely going to add a vignette, but I want it more on the, on the black side. That's before, that's where we are currently. So the midpoint just means in the middle. So if, once I already added a vignette, as you can see, what it what it does is kind of like plays towards the middle to see like how 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 close how far do you want that to be black on the edges? I don't want it that close in the middle. And so, but what I wanted to do, and one of the cool things also I want to point out is that if you look at the yellow, right? The cool thing about this app, it allows you to isolate colors, okay? So if you click, let's go back. So if you go to the color tab and go to the mix at the top, it has a range of colors. And so whatever colors that's in the actual image, you can personally manipulate those, right? What I wanna play with is the yellow. Maybe I don't want them super yellow. Maybe I do want them super yellow. Maybe I want them like that fire type of look. Or maybe I don't want them as yellow like that. I can literally go in. Remember, saturation pushes the color further or it takes it out completely and start makes it more of a kind of black and white type of feel. And so in this case, if I pull it out, because of how dark the image is, it can almost give it back close to like almost like how that original white was. It just looked kind of kind of kind of kind of dirty, but gritty, but it's kind of what I was looking for. All right. And so I want to play with the luminous. So as you can see, it's either darker. You can I kind of like it just makes it more of a brighter kind of glowy type of feel so i want to pull that out more all right and then i may want to play with the reds too so i'll so you play with the hue or you play the saturation like i said you can either leave it in or pull it out but of course i want to still make it look like the actual shoe you know, almost like on some game day type stuff or like a um, something I've had for a while that I care for. All right. And so detail, that just means that like the sharpening, you can add, you can make it more of a detail. So I'll probably do that. And then there's other stuff. Um, but like, I just recommend like people to go in and just start playing with different things. But these are the four main ones that I would focus on. And then you have noise reduction, which basically means, like most times, let's say if you take an image and it's real grainy or there's like not, it's not clear, you can pull this out and it'll make it, it'll start smoothing out. The, the thing about it is that it, if you pull it up too far, you can't really tell what this image you might be able to. And then also too, like if you zoom into a picture, like sometimes these, these phones can like give you some excellent like detail. But let me see if I can show you the difference, what happens when you smooth it. So if you look at that, and if I pull it out, you'll see that it gets, I don't know if you see it, but if you can see it, get, it gets smooth. And then if I come out, it just, it just gives it more like a smooth type. But I don't, I don't want, because it's not looking fake, so I don't want to pull it out too much, just maybe just a little bit. All right. So. Okay, cool. Josh, I hate, I hate to interrupt you, but we're about five minutes to one thirty. So um, yeah, I'm about to. Um, Perfect. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna wrap up there. Um, I hope this stuff was helpful, and uh, I guess we can use this last five minutes for any quick questions that anybody may have. Anybody got any questions? Um, like, I mean, I thought that was really dope how you did that. Like, I didn't know you could use Lightroom that well, but it's really good app. So, how would you like? How would, how do you suggest like we? I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like, how did you like think about your 
like what was the process i don't know like i guess like i don't know it's hard to explain it's like what made you decide to shoot like the shoes like in that moment and like put that feeling onto that with your editing so what what was it how did he find the concept like what is he where did he get his ideas from okay. yeah 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 so I mean, I've been using the app for a while and like I've been taking pictures for a minute. And so I think it's more so like as you take pictures, you begin to get like your own aesthetic. And so you begin to like get your feel for things that you like. But literally, it was literally just me like walking past like, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a picture of those shoes because I really like them. And like these are like easy, like one of my favorite Jordans. And so when I'm like sometimes when I take pictures when you are like creating so think about it from like a sense of like, if you're drawing something from imagination, you can do the same thing with photography. If you're taking a picture in your mind while you're taking it, you can always start, you can instantly start. Once you start editing and start playing with it, you start in your mind, start thinking about, man, maybe I can edit it this way. And so then, then it becomes like a challenge between yourself and your imagination. Like, cool, can I mimic what I see in my head to uh, manipulate it in this app or manipulate it on this program and so it's more so just kind of like experimenting until you find like your own style your own niche um but just being creative of what you have and so like when i'm, I'm looking like cool man what can i what can i use okay i got this black paper i got these shoes let's just see what happens and so because i because i have a, a care or like i care about the shoes then i don't mind taking pictures of them and i don't mind trying to make them look a certain way and a lot of times these apps can be intimidating because it's a lot, but just more so just going in and trying to see what works for you, what doesn't, what type of style of photos you like, and not limiting to yourself to what you don't like. Um, and it's kind of going from there. Hopefully, I hope that answered. Yeah, just thanks. Anybody else? We got like two minutes. Um, I was going to say like, like just kind of pertaining to me a little bit um, in clothing, like what are some techniques that you use to kind of make something stand out more without ch completely changing? Like, like for example, when they get it in the package, I don't want them to be like, wait, this was dark pink on the picture, but now it's like light pink, you know what I'm saying? So like without changing. Yeah, that, so with that, so with product photography, you have to be very careful. Um, so I would recommend trying to take the picture as close to the actual image it is possible. And so that may, that may require, like, you may not be manipulating the colors at all because then it shifts directly from how it actually looks. And so you may want to catch it as natural as possible. If anything, you may, like, you may add a little bit more, like, clarity or... Yeah. Like, just to add, like, a little bit more detail texture-wise, but as far as, like, color-wise, I'll be very careful in, in touching them colors because, to your point, like, you don't want nobody to get something like, hey, like, that's neon pink in the picture, and you send me something that's coral or something like that, or, like, then that can set you up. So I'll be very careful in that. But then, like, taking stuff in, like, natural light will help out a lot, especially since, like, you know, if you're at home, like, get you a big old piece of, like, a... um white paper or something like that and sit it outside and put your stuff on top of that. Um, or maybe wait until a cloudy day and take them. It's, it's, it's many things you can do, but I would be very careful editing wise playing with the colors for sure. Okay. All right, so thank you all. It is 1.30. I'm so excited. This is our first class, y'all. We are trying to figure out how to adjust with everything that is happening. We definitely want to make sure you guys are supported. I know some of y'all really just have school work and then that's it. You don't get to do anything else at home. So please know that um, we have only a couple of things happening this weekend, but we are looking to offer you a lot more. I know Josh is going to make this a series and maybe take a walk outside and take a picture and that becomes a project or something. I know he's working on some things and we'll have some other things in play. Um, so because you participated in this, you get points. You get points for participating, and then sometimes if you just want to be a viewer, you can get a point for that. But what also happens is Miss Bianca is about to send out a text so that we can continue to figure out how to grow this program. We need you guys to help let us know what you thought of this program. So once you get the link from Miss Bianca, please fill it out, and then you'll be entered into the raffle. 
So the raffle we are talking about is can be prizes. We're always thinking up things, but prizes, uh, gift cards. The big thing is going to be on Sunday. We are going to select maybe a family or two to offer dinner, right? So help you and your mom and your dad out and not having to keep figuring out what to eat. We'll either Uber Eats or Grubhub or Postmates you guys something to eat, depending on if your name is full, and um, just for you and your whole family to just relax and enjoy. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back on you. Uh, if y'all, uh, Josh, you got anything else you need to say before we close? Yeah, I'm going to, um, if y'all could send them um, my email. And like I said, y'all got any pictures that y'all are working on, feel free to send them. I would love to look up, look at them and, you know, yeah. So um, I think my email is what, jtaylorcgf at gmail.com. Yeah. I would love to see like what y'all work on. I'll add it to the text too. Yeah. If y'all got any other questions outside of that, yeah, just feel free to hit me up. And I would love to help out any way as possible. But I am looking forward to seeing like what you all create in your time. Isolation. Cool. cool. All right, great. Thank you guys. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, if you're coming on for Miss uh, Andre, he's doing a hip-hop spoken word uh, poetry slam at about 2 o'clock, so that link will be sent out in a little bit as well. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.